back again and today I'm going to do a video and I'm going to be reviewing I don't know about reviewing but just sharing uh, um, my experience going to the Hammerfall Halloween show in San Francisco uh, it's been a week now uh, to the day so it was actually last Saturday June 3rd and uh, man what a freaking show um, it was I believe the second to last date of the tour for uh, the U.S. dates, I believe they finished off uh, in L.A. So um, I was really kind of wondering, you know, how they were going to do, if they were going to be too tired and burnt out at this point. Absolutely not. Absolutely killer, phenomenal show. So um, made a day of it. Uh, one of my best friends came down from Sacramento, uh, Mark, and uh, went to the show with me. And so we made a day of it. Uh, he came in Friday. Uh, we got up early Saturday morning, had some breakfast, got in the truck, hit the road to San Francisco. I'm about an hour north of San Francisco. Uh, so not bad at all uh, to get there. Uh, got there, uh, I want to say it was around 11 a.m., um, not long after 11, uh, and we wanted to go hit Amoeba Records on Hate Street. So good old, good old Amoeba. Um, I know Aaron, the metal theologian, knows all about Amoeba in Berkeley and in San Francisco. Uh, we've talked about that before. Uh, if you don't know Amoeba Records, I believe there's three left, which is San Francisco, L.A., or I'm sorry, San Francisco, Berkeley, and Hollywood. And Amoeba is one of the biggest used record store chains, or biggest square footage. Uh, it's kind of like Toys R Us for used records. Um, and uh, so we went and hit that, and uh, we were there four or five hours, you know. Uh, we made the full day of it. And talk about something coming together, right? So if you're unfamiliar with San Francisco, parking in San Francisco is like parking in New York City. Like, it's just almost impossible. Now, keep in mind, I'm driving a full-size freaking Ram 1500 4x4 pickup truck trying to park in San Francisco. So I expected to just have the worst time trying to park. I parked right around the corner. We're talking 35 feet from Amoeba. Like, there was one spot for me, waiting for me. I couldn't believe it. Beautiful parking. So, uh, paid the meter and uh, went in and uh, began the dig. So, um, Mark's primarily a CD guy. Uh, I'm obviously vinyl uh, and CD. So, uh, what I love about Amoeba is you have everything from 7 inches to 12 inches to CDs to cassettes to 8 tracks to videos, VHS, DVD, the whole gamut in there. And I'm not going to make this a video of everything I got there, but needless to say, I walked out of there with three bags of, of stuff for the collection. Um, and it was just an absolute killer fun day. Fun day digging, no wives involved, just me and my buddy in Amoeba for five and a half hours. And we went through everything, or I did. I mean, I, I went through everything. I started off, obviously, in the metal vinyl section, went to the rock vinyl section, went to seven inches, dug in the seven inches, um, went to the uh, discount uh, records, Went to the discount CDs, went to the metal CD section, um, went to the rock CD section, went to the video room and hit the DVDs and the VHS, um, went back to metal again, uh, went back to rock CDs again, went back to rock 
vinyl again, um, and then went to, and uh, didn't hit this immediately, which is funny, um, but waited till the last minute to actually hit the rock vinyl new arrivals. So, made a killer day of it. Uh, we both found tons of shit. And just had a freaking field day. Had to make a couple trips back to the meter um, to keep that thing fed. And uh, and then uh, when we were done there, unloaded into the truck. And then walked back down the street and went and grabbed uh, some pizza uh, right on Haight Street. So at a place called Escape from New York Pizza. Um, so that was, uh, uh, you know, pizza by the slice, big honking, you know, freaking greasy pepperoni, exactly what you need right before a concert. So, um, it was a killer day there. Um, fun, fun dig. So instead of just making it a day of going to a show, we made it a, a day of just music inspired digging for records and going to a show. It was just awesome. So. From the war field on Haight Street, where Amoeba is, is maybe I think it was about maybe 15 minutes to get down there, um, to get down to Market Street there where the war field is. And again, I'm driving a full-size 4x4 Ram 1500 pickup truck, and I'm thinking, man, we, we got to get there in time to try and find parking. That's not going to cost me $350, you know. And so, coming down the road turn left onto Market Street, make another left to go behind the war field, and I'll be damn, you know, there's the, the tour buses. There were six, four to six, I don't remember exactly how many, but on one side of the street, there were, I think it was four, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, four, and then a big um, truck full of, uh, uh, like an 18-wheeler that was hauling all the equipment, right? So... Uh, on one side of the street uh, were tour buses. On the other side of the street were tour buses and then the equipment truck. And I believe Halloween's buses were on the left side and Hammerfalls were on the right. But I'm not positive on whose was whose. Um, I tried to find out and just couldn't. So anyway, I drive right past the tour buses and would you believe, not even a block away, Bam! Right there was a spot for my truck to park. Couldn't believe it. Lucked out twice, both locations, like it was reserved parking for Laz that day. It was amazing. Amazing. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to be driving around for at least an hour trying to find a place to park this truck to go catch this show, and I pulled right up, and there it was. So, lock everything up tight, get out of the truck, you know get the battle vest on, ready to rock, and take off on foot, go kind of hang out by the tour buses, see if we catch anybody coming and going, and pretty much all I, I didn't see any band members from either band. Um, uh, I did see crew, you know, obviously a lot of crew. Uh, they had all of the um, uh, amps and road cases and stuff all out on the street up against the wall of the war field on the back side, you know, ready to go in, or, you know, they were probably empty because it was already set up inside, but, you know, all the empty road cases and just all that stuff was just lined up outside, and so they had a bunch of, you know, like, crew out there standing guard because anybody could have just rolled off with a freaking, you know, Halloween freaking road case, which, if I could have, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, but, uh, anyway, so it was really cool to see, but I didn't catch any, any band members, and last time I saw Hammerfall, uh, was also in San Francisco, and I want to say it was for the Unbent, Unbowed, and Broken Tour 2004, 2005, something like that, so a good eight, nine years ago, something. Um, in fact, I have a picture of me and Yoakam Cans, lead singer of Hammerfall, um, after that show, uh, hanging out, and uh, he signed uh, some stuff that you can't see, but I got a bunch of Hammerfall signed stuff back here that I've collected over the years, but... Uh, anyway, um, I got a picture of him and I, and uh, in fact, I think I'll show that here. And, and if you look closely, you'll see I'm a lot less gray than I am now, and so is he. Um, but here's a picture of, of me and him, uh, circa 2005, I think it is.
So there you go. So you'll notice uh, I'm all gray now, and back then I wasn't. And uh, uh, if if you look at you know Yoakim Cans now too, he's also you know all gray in the beard and whatnot too. But uh, that was a cool night. But so that was I was able to. I mean, I met the whole band then. Uh, it's the same night I think I met Ed Guy, uh, Tobias Samet, and the band, and it was very you know very personable. So this time I think it was just too. You know, there was just too many people, um, and they weren't making themselves available, but uh, all good. So, walked around the club, walked completely around the block just to get a feel for, you know, what was going on, and uh, jumped in line. We were maybe, I don't know, 13th, 13th or so in line, first dozen, and uh, just waiting for them to start letting in. And so, we had a good, about an hour and a half wait. And which was great, uh, because, uh, we met some really freaking cool people, man. And if it's one thing I love about metal shows, especially smaller metal shows, which I wouldn't say this was small, but compared to something like Maiden, you know, and your big arena shows and all that, you know, this is, this is, you know, and it's for Halloween, this is small for Halloween. You know, usually, you know, over in Germany, they're used to playing like Wacken or big arenas, and here they're playing the fucking Warfield. Which is cool for us, right? Because we kind of get them all to ourselves, but still. So anyway, hanging out and just met some really cool people, man. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the beauty of, of, of the metal family and, you know, especially wearing battle vests, is people can kind of tell what you're into and that starts conversation and et cetera, et cetera. And ended up hanging out with some really cool freaking people, um, and just it made the time go by really quick. And so then they started uh, to let us in. So go in, and first off, so I was wearing my chain wallet, and they didn't want to let me in with my chain wallet. I thought, man, is this what we've come to now? Like, you can't even have a chain wallet? They consider that a, a, a weapon. I haven't had that before. Um, so uh, finally they said, you know, as long as I tucked it in my pocket, I could I could pass whatever, you know, like I'm going to strangle people to death with my chain wallet. So, um, it's time to get over it, people. So anyway, I go in and, you know, I know this routine. The first thing I'm going to do is we went and hit merch. So they had two separate merch areas, one for Halloween, one for Hammerfall. Halloween was first, um, and Hammerfall was behind it. So went ahead and hit Halloween first and, um, glad I did. So what I got, obviously the, the shirt, so, um, you know, this is the, the actual image of the tour, Halloween, Hammerfall with the pumpkin and the hammer, United Forces, so gotta love that image. They had a really cool selection of shirts, um, I think there's probably a good nine or so different shirts, um, but I wanted this one, this was the only one that had both bands on one shirt, um. And that's really what I wanted, because I'm a, obviously a huge fan of both bands, but um, I wanted that shirt. But I also sprung for uh, the hoodie, and the reason I did, here's the hoodie. Number one, it's a zip-up. You got the Halloween pumpkin on the front, and I'm a sucker for zip-up hoodies. Those are my favorites. Uh, you got the, uh, the artwork of the new album on the back. All right. And then you have the United Forces World Tour going down the arm. But, uh, so, 3X, one of the last, I think he said three or four 3X hoodies that he had left. So, I'm like, dude, I'm grabbing that. And when I went to the last Maiden show, uh, the hoodie I got there was 150 bucks. And I threw down for that, no question. That's my band, you know. So here I was expecting, oh my God, it's going to be another 150 bucks, 70 bucks. So half of what I expected to pay. So I'm like, yep, I'll be taking that hoodie and that t-shirt, right? So <clears throat> that's what I got. And then from there, I went over to the Hammerfall merch. And they had one shirt I really wanted. It was a button-up shirt. And... Really freaking cool. Didn't have my size. And then I look over on the counter, and they had the uh, uh, the 20 year anniversary of a Crimson Thunder um, 
and uh, uh, they had the, the the CD box set, and they had the vinyl there. And it's funny because normally I would have pre-ordered this from Nuclear Blast, and I missed the pre-order this time. And I thought, ah, eh, it's going to be around. I'll grab it. Not not a big deal. So here I am at the show, and there's the vinyl sitting there, right? Two LP limited edition trifold jacket, and signed for the show, so I had to grab it, and it's already framed. So, uh, signed by all band members. What the girl was saying that was running the booth was that they signed about 10 copies of this per show, and once they're gone, they're gone. That's it, okay? Um, so, I'm like, dude, I'm so getting that. Grabbed this, and uh, uh, this was 40 bucks, and so I'm like... <laughs> You know, I think Nuke Blast for just a regular copy is like 30 something dollars, and then they kill you on shipping, so I'm like, no brainer. And the interesting thing is, so, unshrink wrapped, obviously, because they signed it, and then the hype sticker is actually placed on the jacket itself. So, I don't know if they got them that way, or if they unshrink them and replace the hype sticker. I don't see them doing that. So, I think they got these set up like this strictly from Nuke Blast, just for them to sign for the show. Um... So, in fact, after the show, when I walked past by the booth, they had the vinyl sitting there, but they were unsigned copies. They were just regular copies. So, yeah, they, they sold all of them that they had for the show. And so I was very thankful and uh, felt lucky enough to get one. So, already framed, you know, um, got to love it. So, um, there we go. So, very, very happy to get that. So, that's the merch that I picked up, and it was just... From there, such a cool experience. So the Warfield has a coat check, which is really cool. And at first I'm like, I ain't putting my shit in coat check, my autographed record, my hoodie, my t-shirt. I ain't putting that in coat check. I'll never see it again. And then I thought, you know what? You know, I'd rather take the chance and enjoy myself and not have to be carrying this crap. So I did. I put it in coat check and everything was fine. Everything was fine. It was all there when I went and claimed it. You know, all good. So, but anyway, so from there, went into, or we had to go downstairs to go to coat check, which is down in the basement, and then came back up uh, to the floor and entered the the uh, theater itself. And uh, Mark's like, I'm buying drinks. Let's go. I'm like, okay. So we go get some drinks. And it was, uh, we each got a shot of Maker's Mark and a beer each and it was 75 bucks and i could not believe that i was like i would never pay that this is where they're getting you right 75 dollars for two shots of maker's mark bourbon two beers 75 bucks <clears throat> so anyway but he was treating, so, because, well, I bought his tickets, so he, he repaid in, in drinks, which was cool. Um, and so then walked right down to the floor, and it's funny because I had seated tickets, but they were like, you know, because I asked them, like, okay, where's my seats? And they're like, well, yeah, there's seats are over there, or if you want, you can go ahead and just go down to the floor. And I'm like, I don't know, let's, let's try. I, I told Mark, I'm like, man, I don't know if I can handle the floor anymore, you know, I'm older now, um... And I just don't know, but I'm like, fuck, this is Halloween. I've got to try. I've got to try it. So ended up going down on the floor, and I know Halloween's layout, right? And I know Hammerfall's layout. Their, their stage stature, where, where the members usually are, right? So I wanted to be right in front of frickin' Kai Hansen's mic. I know where he goes, and that's where I wanted to be. And that's where we were. And also ended up being right in front of Oscar Drojnak's uh, same mic area, uh, you know, lead guitarist for Hammerfall. Uh, but I really, really, really wanted to be right in front of Kai Hansen. And so we got that spot. Uh, I was three people deep, literally three people from the stage. So, um, in fact, here's a quick clip of us. Uh, I was kind of like showing the floor real quick uh, where we just got to the floor. So I'll show that for you here real fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm even blue on the half side of my face when you go over there. I'm pink. 
<laughs> here we are getting ready for Hammerfall and fucking Halloween. Woo! <laughs> At the war field. They're all filling in, but there you go. There's a look at the club. And then back at the stage. Okay, so there you go. So that's that's where we were. Um, and then uh, the show begins, right? And as as you know, as as it starts getting close to the show time, man, it just fills up, right? And I'm going, oh shit, now I'm trapped down here. Like, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done this, but you know, fuck it, I'm going to go for it, you know. And uh, so Hammerfall comes on and just slays, man. They were so good, so so good. They sounded great. They looked great. Um, you can definitely see some age there. And to me, it's funny because Hammerfall to me has always been a newer band. And when I think about it, I got into Hammerfall in like 90, something like 98, I think, something like that. So it's been a while. It's been a while. But, uh, anyway, um, so they, they were freaking great. Um, and, uh, I'll show a quick clip of them here now, also, uh, live. And it, uh, again, shows my location. I mean, we were right there at the stage, three people deep. So, here you go. Here's a little hammerfall, quick snip. Okay, so, uh, Hammerfall, you know, ends the set, and, man, the crew immediately comes out and, you know, starts breaking down. There must have been 20, a crew of 20 or so that were all dismantling Hammerfall and setting up Halloween. You know, most of Halloween stuff was already set up, but curtained, you know, or draped, right? So, you know, I could already see the pumpkin for the drum riser, you know, I was just under black carpet or black uh, cloth and all that, you know, but I, I know what the stage looks like, so I could tell it was there and pretty much ready to go. Um, and, I mean, these guys were just total pros, and I almost got a freaking um, uh, playlist, uh, track list um, off the stage, um, but didn't quite get it. And then also for Hammerfall, when they were throwing picks out, I had my hand up and not that I'm that worried about it. I got plenty of Hammerfall picks that were literally handed to me in person, but it's always fun to catch them at the show. And literally I had my hand up, but the lights were hitting me. So I, I was just like, if I feel it, I'll grab it. And sure as shit, I felt picks hit my hand, but I, I didn't catch them. They bounced off or fell to the floor and I could not find them. So, struck out there. Anyway, so, missed the set list. Almost got one. Um, but uh, there was one arm just a little further out in mine, and, and so they got it. So, congrats to them. You know, all totally awesome. But, so then, uh, we got probably another, you know, 15, 20 minutes before, you know, Halloween's due on. Now, at this point, here's the age coming in, right? So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 54, and I have a bad back, big, 
injury in my back for years now, and it has given me severe, severe, severe sciatica flare-ups, where it feels like my legs are on fire, right? And they go numb, but they're burning. It's kind of hard to explain. Those that have sciatica, I'm sure I understand what I'm talking about. Man, sure as hell, boom, I get this flare-up of sciatica, and I'm like, oh my god, like, oh shit. And I'm like, it'll pass, it'll pass. I'm kind of dealing with it. And uh, lights dim, and boom, ha uh, Halloween comes on. And I mean, they open with frickin' Skyfall. I couldn't believe it. I knew they were going to play Skyfall. I did not expect it as the opener, though. So that was extremely cool. Um, and sure enough, I was right. Kai was right fucking there. I was so stoked. So fucking stoked. I mean, that's Kai Hansen. That's that's my dude right up there, right? That's This is the man. When it comes to the band Halloween, Kai Hansen is my favorite member of the band. So I was like, damn, there he is right now. This is great. And so sure as shit, man, Skyfall, awesome. Um, Andy sounded great. Michael sounded great. Um, I could really see this is the first time, and I've been you know, following live video feed of them, and this is the first time I really saw some age in Michael Kiska. You know, he had some really you know, double chin going on, and, you know, he really put some weight on and, and whatnot. Andy has has looked kind of the same. You can see age in Andy, too, but he's always kind of looked like that for the past 10 years or so. Um, and Kai just looks the same. But I could really see some age in Michael, but, man, he sounded awesome, awesome. In fact, they all did. Um, Kai Hansen, uh, they did a, um, he did a, uh, like a Kai medley, um, which was cool, but some of the songs he did in the medley, I would have loved to have seen the full songs of those, but I understand. I mean, you're talking about a band, a legacy band with a big catalog, so they can only, you know, here they are with all these members back together trying to fit, you know, the entire catalog into one show. It's, it's never going to be done. So medleys are what you get, and medley is what we got, and I'm thankful for it. But, man, Kai sounded freaking awesome. His voice was spot on. I have heard lately that his voice has been kind of coming and going, and, you know, it's not aging well, and, and yeah, he's a smoker, and, well, they all are, and all this, and, and, and whatnot, and... So I, I, I had an expectation, and that expectation was not a big expectation. I expected to see, you know, uh, uh, an aging Kai Hansen and hear an aging Kai Hansen, and I didn't, which was the amazing part of the show. I mean, he was perfection. He played perfectly. He sounded perfectly. What a freaking treat, and, you know... Good on him, man. I, I, I hope he's able to keep it together like that and, and continue to sound like that because that's amazing. Um, but it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, the set list was, was, was killer. Um, I actually have the set list from my show. So they open with Skyfall. Uh, they go into Eagle Fly Free. Uh, Mass Pollution off the new album also, which was awesome. That was such a cool track. Into Future World, classic favorite Halloween song. Uh, Power, Save Us, Metal Invaders, Victim of Fate, uh, Gorgar, Ride the Sky, Heavy Metal Law, or Heavy Metal is the Law, uh, Forever in One, and then the Sasha solo. And Sasha was just awesome this show, too. He's, man, God, these guys, it was such a great show. Um, Best time off the new album, which was awesome. Uh, uh, Doctor Doctor Stein, how many tears? Perfect gentleman, um, and keeper of the seven keys, and I want out, which were uh, 
Encores. So, you know, they ended the night on I Want Out, which, I mean, you know, that's their, you know, run to the hills, right? Um, or their Iron Maiden, you know, so... It was perfect. It was a perfect freaking night, man. It was a perfect night. We met cool people, had a fun day digging, got some killer-ass merch, saw two incredible fucking bands. Um, however, I will say this, uh, it was... What track was it? It might have been Dr. Stein, I think. A pit breaks out. A mosh pit at a Halloween show, which I thought was just, dude, not at a Halloween show. But it breaks out, and that is when I'm like, later. I just can't do that shit anymore. And so Mark and I kind of fed back... Um, passed out of the pit and just kind of got back up onto the, the risers behind the floor a little bit and finished the show from there, which I was totally cool with. Um, but I couldn't handle that, you know, the, mm, 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 getting too old for that shit, man. So anyway, uh, but I was able to hang in there through two thirds, three quarters of the show, three deep from the stage. So, um, I don't know if I could do it again, but uh, I had to try for this show, and I was, I was, you know, glad to be able to at least get that far. So, anyway, just wanted to share this with you guys. I don't get to a lot of shows anymore, um, but uh, this was one, you know. I mean, I, I always, nothing will ever keep me from going to Maiden. Um, everything else has always been kind of like as I can, when I can. Um, so I'm so glad um, I made this show. I, I remember buying these tickets early on, early on. Um, six, eight months out, something like that. Um, but, uh, just a killer, killer show. Well worth it. Well worth the, the money, the effort, everything. This was definitely a memorable show that I really am so thankful for that I went to. So now I actually already have tickets for the end of the month. Uh, I'm going to be seeing Blue Oyster Cult. So, Another one of my favorite bands. Uh, in fact, Mark's going to come down and go with me to that one, too. So we're going to go hit BOC in San Rafael, California on June 30th. So that's the next one. Can't wait. In fact, I might even do a... I haven't done a Blue Oyster Cult video since before... I mean, way back in the old days. And so I need to do a new BOC collection video, too. So maybe, maybe that's in the works. But anyway... This was all about fucking Halloween and Hammerfall. Awesome. I hope they're coming around again. You know, um, either band for that matter. But uh, I've seen Hammerfall a few times now. Um, would love to see Halloween again. So, till the next one, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Peace. Stay in the groove. And I'll see you in the next one.